Hello, Time Conscious friends. Today, we embark on a journey to reclaim one of our most precious resources, time. In a world where distractions abound and demands on our attention seem endless, it's all too easy to fall into the trap of wasting precious moments on activities that do not serve our goals or nourish our souls. But fear not for today. We will draw upon the wisdom of some of the world's most successful individuals to uncover the most powerful tips for maximizing our time and living with purpose and intention. Time is the great equalizer. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Yet, how we choose to spend those hours can make all the difference in our personal and professional lives. From visionary entrepreneurs and innovative thinkers to resilient leaders and mindful creators, the individuals whose insights we will explore today have mastered the art of time management and productivity, achieving remarkable success in their chosen fields. As we journey together through their life tips and strategies, I invite you to reflect on your own relationship with time. Are you making the most of each precious moment, or are you allowing distractions and inefficiencies to steal your time and energy? What are the habits and behaviors that are holding you back from reaching your full potential? And how can you reclaim control over your time and your life? With each tip shared today, I encourage you to approach it with an open mind and a willingness to experiment. Remember, the path to mastery is paved with small, consistent actions taken day after day. By implementing even one powerful life tip into your daily routine, you can begin to unlock new levels of productivity, fulfillment, and success. So without further ado, let us dive into the most powerful life tips from successful people and reclaim our time with purpose and intention. Are you ready to stop wasting your time and start living your best life? Let's begin. The only thing standing between your incredible abilities and yourself is fear. The good news is that you have extraordinary potential for triumph and personal fulfillment, as well as for achieving prosperity. Since you have more talent and natural ability than you can use in a thousand lifetimes. As Bruce Barton said, only those who dare to believe that something inside them is superior to circumstances have achieved splendid goals. I will teach you how to move from the fear zone to a fear-free zone. In the next few minutes of this video, you will learn how to develop self-confidence courage, and unwavering determination in every area of your life. You'll face the greatest challenges and opportunities of your daily life without any fear and be convinced of your ability to achieve everything you set out to do. Step into the fear-free zone. For over 25 years, Brian Tracy, I have studied successful women and men, seeking the characteristics and qualities they all have in common that have allowed them to achieve much more than the average person. I have read countless books, articles, and research studies on success, and I have come to the conclusion that the fundamental quality for success in every walk of life is the confidence each person has in themselves. Every dreamer who has ever achieved something out of the ordinary has had greater self-confidence than people with average results. When you believe in yourself so much that you know you have the ability to achieve almost anything you truly want, your future will be limitless. Here's an important question. What would you do differently if you were guaranteed success in any endeavor? What if a higher power granted you the power to reach the goal you set for yourself? In other words, what if you were not afraid of anyone or anything and felt completely free to act in any area that would benefit you? As we've just heard, the quality of unwavering self-confidence holds immense power to shape your world and unlock untapped potential. Yet, for many, cultivating this trait is no easy feat. Indeed, self-confidence is a rare commodity in today's world, with many individuals grappling with feelings of doubt, insecurity, and fear. As psychologist Abraham Maslow astutely observed, the history of humanity is replete with instances of individuals undervaluing themselves and succumbing to the limitations imposed by their own self-doubt. But here's the remarkable truth. Self-confidence is not an innate trait reserved for the lucky few. It is a mental quality that can be cultivated and strengthened through deliberate effort and practice. While it's true that everyone possesses varying levels of self-confidence, the key lies in harnessing that potential and systematically enhancing it over time. The journey towards greater self-confidence begins with a willingness to confront and overcome the fears and insecurities that hold us back. As I often say, everything we do is driven by either fear or desire. And fear, particularly fear of the unknown, remains one of the greatest obstacles to cultivating unwavering self-confidence. But fear not, for the path to self-confidence 
is within your reach. By setting your mind to the task and committing to a process of systematic self-improvement, you can elevate yourself to new heights of confidence and self-assurance in any area of your life. So as we continue our exploration of self-confidence and its transformative power, I encourage you to reflect on your own journey and identify areas where you can begin to cultivate greater confidence and belief in yourself. With dedication, persistence, and a willingness to confront your fears head on, you have the power to rewrite the story of your life and unleash your true potential. Fear holds us back more than any other factor. Fear of all kinds works on us unconsciously to underestimate and sabotage our best intentions and our greatest hopes. In fact, as you listen to these words, you are probably thinking of a fear that is holding you back in some way. No matter what you do, fear rears its ugly head and tries to trick you up. Sometimes fear will appear consciously in the form of rationalizations and excuses that you will use to sabotage yourself and hold yourself back. At other times, you will see yourself avoiding setting goals, saying that I already know what my goals are. I don't need to write them down. Your subconscious will tell you that if you don't set clear goals, you won't go through the experience of failing. This is just another way of saying that you don't really believe in your ability to improve in what you are doing. Now, often fear will show up as your procrastination in writing your goals. You'll decide to write them all down over the weekend, during your summer vacation, when you can dedicate a couple of hours or at some undefined point in the future. Then, like 97% or more of adults, you'll never do it. You'll start rationalizing and say, well, considering my situation, it's probably not going to make any difference anyway. Orson Sweat Martin said, there can be no great value where there is no confidence or security. For half the triumph in battle lies in the conviction that we can accomplish what we undertake. If fear is the worst enemy of self-confidence, then the worst enemy of human triumph is the comfort zone. Psychologists have determined that each of us has a natural tendency to gravitate towards a zone of performance and behavior where we are comfortable, one that is easy and unchallenging, and then we stay there. We stop trying, we relax day by day. We develop habits that lead us to poor performance and failure. We settle for much less than we are actually capable of. We engage in social media, watch television, listen to music, socialize, and generally waste time, convincing ourselves from time to time that this is the best we can do. We build the confidence to tackle higher goals by using our energies to accomplish smaller goals. We build our confidence as we progress until we reach the point where there is nothing we cannot undertake. Indeed, the habit of setting and achieving higher goals is absolutely indispensable for the development of higher levels of confidence and personal effort. Only you can truly believe in yourself when you undoubtedly know that you have the ability to do what you set out to do. True self-confidence does not come from having good wishes or positive hopes or positive thoughts, but from being positive based on the fact that you have proven to yourself time and time again that you have what it takes to go from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. Self-confidence is a state of mind. It is an attitude, and as such, it is more important than facts. However, it must be based on facts to be the kind of self-confidence you can rely on in a decisive moment. Your job is to do whatever it takes to convince yourself in your heart that you are completely unstoppable in achieving what you set out to do. William James said, compared to what we should be, we are only half awake. We are only using a small part of our physical and mental resources. Broadly speaking, the human individual lives very much within his limits. He possesses powers of various kinds that he regularly does not use. The founder of Success Magazine, Orson Sweat Martin stated, there are powers within you that, if you could discover and use, would make you everything you ever dreamed or imagined you would be. In a five-year study on leaders presented in his book, Leaders, Warren Bennis found that each of them consciously avoids the comfort zone by continuously setting higher goals. They never allow themselves to become complacent. They live broadly, always striving to be and do more, to develop strong confidence. You need to see yourself and think of yourself as a leader and do what leaders do. You need to stretch yourself to the outer limits of your potential, set goals that bring out the best in you, work towards goals that make you feel a sense of mastery and peak performance. And it all starts with a notebook, a pen, and you not imagining limits. The starting point for setting goals is to abandon all mental limitations and let your mind wander freely through an entire universe of possibilities. Your primary task initially 
is to allow yourself to dream big and determine exactly what you want to get out of life in every area and dimension. Decide what is right before deciding what is possible. Imagine that you can be, have, or do literally everything you actually want, as long as you know exactly what it is. First, make your dream list. Imagine for a moment that you have no limitations of time, money, knowledge, contacts, experience, or education. Imagine that any goal you write down is possible for you. Remember that any goal you can define clearly and crystallize on paper is possible, as long as you desire it for long enough and with enough intensity. And if you're willing to make the efforts and sacrifices necessary, there are no unrealistic goals, only unrealistic time-wise. The act of writing down your goal sets the entire universe in motion in your favor and activates all mental laws to assist you. In fact, many people have experienced writing a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting it away, and not looking at it again until the end of the year, only to discover that they achieved almost 80% of those goals, sometimes in the most incredible ways. The act of writing down big and challenging goals makes three things happen. First, your self-concept improves and your confidence immediately increases. The act of setting goals requires confidence and builds confidence simultaneously. Having the courage to write down what you truly want enhances your self-image and boosts your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, you tap into your mental and emotional powers. Setting goals triggers an explosion of physical and mental energy. Your heart and breathing rates increase. The act of setting goals is exciting in itself. It sounds a bit cheesy, but someone once said, feeling apathetic? Make a list. It's true. It's like stepping on the accelerator of your own physical and mental potential. If you do it every day, the results will be tremendous. Third, committing to paper. Having committed your goal to paper dramatically increases the odds of achieving it. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot clearly write down a goal on paper, not on a computer screen, without simultaneously having the ability to fulfill it in some way. The most important question is how much you want it. There are several mental exercises to determine your goals. First, imagine you've just won a million dollars in cash and you can do or have whatever you want with the money. What is the first thing you would do? Where would you go? What changes would you make in your life if you had absolute financial freedom? What would you do differently from what you're doing now? Second, describe your ideal lifestyle. Imagine you could live your ideal of the perfect life. Where in the country would you choose to live? What kind of company would you want to work for or start and run on your own? What kind of house and car would you want? How would you like to spend your time in your life? What kind of relationships would you want? Third, ask yourself what you would do if you knew today that you only had six months left to live. If you had no limitations, how would you spend these last six months? It's another way of asking what's really important to you. Who would you among the important people in your life and set a series of goals to achieve that situation? Six, assess your health. Describe what perfect physical and mental health means to you and design your plan to achieve those levels. Seventh, define the type of person you would like to become both personally and professionally. Then establish a personal and professional development plan that allows you to learn, grow, and become the person you aspire to be. Remember what I said before. To have something, you must first be something. The importance of goals. The reason why goals are so important in building self-confidence is because the act itself of setting a big goal in your life activates all mental laws in your favor. It's as if all the switches are turned on in your engine of achievement and the afterburners of your potential are ignited. Clear goals free you from the law of accident. That is, the tendency of things to happen randomly and unpredictably. Goals give you a clear sense of direction and the knowledge that your life is full of self-determination. Goals give you a sense of purpose and focus. They make you feel that everything that happens to you is part of an organized plan that is leading you step by step toward the fulfillment of your highest ideals. Your ability to set goals and make plans for their accomplishment is the ultimate skill of triumph, without which very little is possible. The habit of setting goals regularly and achieving them is almost more important than any other skill you can ever learn. And finally, I want to share this story with you. I had a friend who smoked for 30 years and said he couldn't quit smoking because it was a deeply ingrained habit that dated back to the early days of his adulthood. One day, he felt chest pains and went to see his doctor who ordered a series of tests. When the results came back, the doctor made my friend sit down and told him he had a serious heart problem and that if he continued smoking, 
he would be dead in six months. Samuel Johnson said, When a man knows he is to be hanged in a fortnight, he concentrates his mind wonderfully. The idea of dying was so emotionally charged for my friend that he took out his cigarettes, threw them in the trash, and never touched one again. On the positive side, if you were completely convinced that you were destined for great success and that there would be nothing in the world that could prevent you from achieving great things, while sincerely dedicating yourself to every activity and persisting until you succeed, you would become an irresistible force of nature. The depth of your thinking and the strength of your conviction would dramatically increase the power of your personality. If you truly believed in your ability to achieve great triumphs, you would become unstoppable. The four C's of inner confidence. You can develop this kind of belief, this inner confidence, by developing what I call the four C's. First, clarity. Decide exactly what you want to achieve and what kind of person you want to become. Second, conviction. Develop the strong belief that you can do whatever you set out to do. Third, commitment. Decide to do whatever it takes. Develop the willingness to pay the price in advance for any triumph you desire. Fourth, consistency. Decide to work on your goals every day, morning, noon, and night until you have achieved them. When you back your goals and actions with clarity, conviction, commitment, and consistency, you are on your way to developing the kind of confidence that will make everything possible for you. And as we bring our exploration of time management and productivity to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the invaluable insights and wisdom shared today. The tips and strategies we've uncovered from some of the world's most successful individuals serve as a roadmap to reclaiming control over our time and living with greater purpose and intention. From prioritizing tasks and eliminating distractions to cultivating mindfulness and embracing self-care, each piece of advice offers a powerful reminder of the transformative potential that lies within our grasp. But let us not simply marvel at the wisdom of others. Let us take action. Let us commit to implementing these life-changing tips into our daily routines one step at a time. For it is through consistent effort and intentional action that we will truly unlock the full potential of our time and our life. As you reflect on the lessons learned today, I encourage you to identify one key takeaway, a single tip or strategy that resonates deeply with you and holds the power to catalyze positive change in your life. Make a commitment to incorporate this insight into your daily routine and watch as it transforms your productivity, happiness, and overall well-being. Remember, time is our most precious resource and how we choose to spend it shapes the course of our lives. By honoring our time and using it wisely, we can create a future filled with success, fulfillment, and abundance. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery and growth. May the wisdom shared today serve as a guiding light on your path to greater productivity and purpose. And may you always remember the power to stop wasting your time and start living your best life lies within you. Seize it with courage, intention, and unwavering determination. Until we meet again, make every moment count. Hello, my fellow seekers of greatness. Today, I want to take you on a journey, a journey of discovery, empowerment, and transformation. A journey that will challenge the limits you've placed on yourself and propel you towards heights you never thought possible. Welcome to a conversation about overcoming limits and unleashing the full extent of your potential through powerful habits that defy belief. Think for a moment about the barriers that stand between you and your aspiration. Perhaps it's self-doubt, fear of failure, or simply the inertia of complacency. Whatever form they may take, these limits have a way of holding us back, preventing us from reaching our truest selves and realizing our boldest dream. But here's the good news. You have within you the power to transcend these limits. And it all starts with the cultivation of powerful habits, small yet consistent actions that have the extraordinary ability to reshape your reality and propel you towards greatness. In the next few moments, we'll explore the stories of individuals who have defied the odds, shattered their own limitations, and achieved remarkable success through the power of habit. From athletes who have pushed past physical boundaries to entrepreneurs who have revolutionized entire industries, 
Their stories serve as testaments to the transformative potential of habit. But before we delve into their journeys, I want you to take a moment to reflect on your own life. What are the limits that hold you back? What habits do you currently possess that either reinforce those limits or propel you towards your goals? And most importantly, are you ready to embrace the power within you to break free from those constraints and achieve the extraordinary? So, my friends, fasten your seatbelts and prepare for a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Together, we will uncover the powerful habits that will take you beyond belief and pave the way for a life of limitless possibility. Are you ready to embark on this adventure? Let's dive in. Five reasons why you're not achieving success and how to overcome them. Brian Tracy, we've all been there feeling like we're not reaching success. The most common reason why many people don't achieve success is that we haven't defined what success is for us. To get to where you want to be, you must determine your end point and work backward to outline the steps from that point to where you are now. That's why it's so important to set goals. Setting goals gives you both a long-term vision and a short-term focus. Throughout my years, I found some common reasons why people don't achieve success. And almost all of these struggles happen because they don't see goal setting as a solution. You're trying to achieve something and not setting a goal. So I invite you to stick around until the end of this material that I've prepared, especially for you. In this video, you're going to learn the reasons why you're probably not achieving success and how to overcome them. We've all been there feeling motivated to work towards our goals, but then failing along the way. Not reaching a goal can be discouraging and can deter from setting other meaningful goals. However, instead of feeling discouraged when I don't reach a goal, I immediately take some time and reflect on why I didn't achieve that goal so I can learn and grow from the experience. Generally, setting SMART goals is the best way to ensure that we reach our goals, and there are some simple steps we can take to set better goals and then achieve them. Here are five reasons why you might not be achieving your goals and the best ways to address those issues. One, your goals are too vague. Many times people set goals that are too vague. You might think, I'd like to get in shape or it would be great to have more money in my savings account. And sure, that would be great. But unless you describe your goals more specifically, you probably won't reach them. Specific goals are helpful because when you explain exactly what you want to do, it's easier to imagine yourself doing it and then actually follow through. Instead of saying, I want to get in shape, try saying, I will exercise three days a week and stop drinking sodas. So, your goal has transformed from something vague you'd like to do into something concrete and specific you're going to do. Two, you're not quantifying your goals. A common mistake when it comes to setting goals is that your goals aren't measurable. You should value your goal and measure your progress. Otherwise, it's probably a good idea to revisit and modify your overall goal. For example, if you said, my goal is to save more money, it's difficult to measure. What does more mean? That goal can be interpreted in many different ways and could pat me on the back for saving dollar, when in reality, one dollar can't buy much at all. But if I said my goal is to save $5,000 by this summer, it's easy to track that progress. I can regularly check my bank account to see how close I am to that $5,000 mark. And along the way, I stay motivated because I see how close I am to that goal. I encourage you to do the same. Three, you're setting unattainable goals. Setting goals is exciting. You might have big plans like becoming a millionaire or building your dream home. But if you set the bar too high, you're not going to reach your goals and you'll feel disappointed in yourself and exhausted. An easy way to combat this is by setting goals that are attainable. For example, let's say I want to build my dream home. Saying I want to build a new home for my family in the next six months probably isn't an attainable goal. Building a house takes time, so a more realistic goal could be I will research contractors and get a quote. Once I've achieved that goal, I can think about the rest of the process and decide what the next realistic goal might be. You see the difference? Or, you're setting goals that are irrelevant to your life. Sure, you might like the idea of moving to New York City or the Caribbean, but is that goal really relevant to your life? Achieving that goal might be fun, but if it doesn't move you further along the path of your overall plan for your life, it really wasn't worth it. That's why I always make sure my goals aren't a waste of time. Every goal should have a purpose behind it to help make it relevant. Instead of moving to the Caribbean just because the blue water looks nice, a better goal might be, I want to move to such a city 
because there are many job opportunities there in my industry. When I set goals, I always make sure they're relevant to my life. Five, you're not adding a time frame requirement. Adding a deadline to each goal you set is essential. When you add a deadline to your goals, you'll be much more motivated to work towards them and ensure you reach them before the time period ends. What does this look like? It's simple. Instead of saying, I want to hire two more employees for my company, say, I want to hire two more employees for my company within three months. Then you'll be more motivated to pursue and achieve that goal. To ensure I reach goals, I give myself realistic deadlines. These help me keep my goals aligned and within reach. But let me ask you, have you ever set a goal that you couldn't reach? What was it? And how could you have made it more achievable? If you're ready to start setting better goals, you're in luck. Remember, you have the ability to set and achieve any goal. To succeed, know that you must set goals, but reaching them is where the real work begins. If you've tried and failed to reach your goals in the past, it's easy to become discouraged. Perhaps you've started to wonder if you're not the type of person who can easily achieve goals. But the truth is, anyone can learn techniques that will allow them to reach any goal they set. As beloved novelist C. Lewis said, you are never too old to set a new goal or dream a new dream. This encouraging thought rings true today and especially for you who have decided to pursue your goals. So today I'm going to share some of my secrets for achieving goals that I've developed over my 30 years of business experience. Take a moment to congratulate yourself for coming this far. You've taken the first and most important step towards improving your life and goal setting skills. Success is not an action you take, it's a way of life. If you want to achieve great things, greatness must be reflected in everything you do. Therefore, regardless of what you want to achieve, the path to success must begin by adopting the right mindset. The following are five tips for developing the perfect mindset for success. But before sharing these five tips, let me recommend a training that complements this video which has changed the lives of many people. This training will teach you to have a mindset of wealth and abundance in just 21 days. We'll leave the link to the training in the video description. Now, without further ado, here are the five tips for developing the perfect mindset for success. One, define what success means. The first step in building a mindset for success is defining what it means to be successful. Setting goals for yourself makes it easier to craft an action plan to achieve your ambitions and will motivate you to carry out that plan. It also provides you with a standard against which to measure your progress and adjust your strategy. Therefore, you should define life or professional goals and then think about what you need to do to achieve them. Try setting smart goals in every area of your life that you want to change. Additionally, create short-term goals every day or week, ensuring they align with your broader goals. Two, stay in touch with your intuition. The second step to building a mindset for success is staying in touch with your intuition. Many assume that success means making calculated decisions based on empirical data. While you should strive to be as empirical as possible, such data isn't always available. Regardless of your specific path, you're likely to encounter a decision at some point in your life or career where there isn't a calculable answer. In this situation, you must be able to listen to your intuition. Although not a perfect source of information, our intuitions can often solve problems more quickly than conscious thought. This will enable you to make decisive decisions in challenging situations. Three, always maintain a positive attitude. Never underestimate the value of a positive attitude towards achieving your goals. Regardless of the path you take, it can be easy to become discouraged by setbacks or temporary failures in achieving specific goals. Positive thinking means identifying these setbacks as learning opportunities. This makes it easier to overcome small failures and keep striving to achieve your goals. Positive thinking also tends to make you a more likable person, allowing you to attract support from others who can help you along the way. Four, take action. You need to translate your thoughts into action. In addition to positive thoughts, a mindset for success also requires that your thinking be productive. Whenever you're contemplating your goals or obstacles to achieving them, you should be able to identify clear actions you can take in response. The more easily you can transfer an idea or desire into practical action, the easier it will be to move towards your goals. Five, assume complete responsibility. A mindset for success means being able to take responsibility for everything you do, whether good or bad. If you make a mistake or harm someone along the way, assuming responsibility allows you to contain the damage and preserve your reputation. 
It also encourages you to think about how you might avoid that mistake in the future. Similarly, if you achieve something, you should take credit for it. Only then will others realize what you're capable of and support you on your path to success. The millionaire mindset for achieving financial independence. There is plenty of money for all those who know how to acquire it and keep it. We live in an abundant universe where there is enough money for all those who truly desire it and are willing to obey the laws that govern its acquisition. You can have everything you want. There is plenty of money available to you. There is no real scarcity. You can have virtually everything you truly desire and need. We live in a generous universe and are surrounded on all sides by blessings and opportunities to acquire everything we truly desire. Your attitude, whether of abundance or scarcity towards money, will have a significant impact on whether you'll become rich or not. Make a decision. The first corollary of the law of abundance states that people become rich because they decide to become rich. They become rich because they believe they have the ability to become rich. Because they believe this wholeheartedly, they act accordingly, consistently, taking the necessary actions that turn their beliefs into realities. And you can always know what your beliefs truly are by observing your actions. There's no other way. The second corollary of this law says, people are poor because they haven't yet decided to become rich. Examine your own thinking. In Mark Fisher's book, The Instant Millionaire, the old millionaire asked the young man seeking advice on becoming a millionaire. Why aren't you already rich? This is an important question you should ask yourself. How you answer this question will reveal a lot about yourself. Your answers will expose your self-limiting beliefs, doubts, fears, excuses, rationalizations, and justifications. Additionally, you should review your reasons why you're not already rich. Write down all the reasons that come to mind. Go through your answers one by one with someone who knows you well and ask for their opinion. You may be surprised to discover that your reasons are mostly excuses you've fallen in love with. Whatever your reasons or excuses, you can overcome them. The world is full of hundreds and thousands of people who have overcome far greater difficulties than you could imagine and still succeeded. You can too. Your goal in life is to be a great success. Achieve wonderful things as you become stronger, improve with each passing day and week, and ultimately develop your full potential as a person in everything you do. The good news is that there has never been a better time in all of human history for you to achieve your goals and achieve great success than today, right here, right now, wherever you live and whatever you are doing. We are entering what many economists call the golden age of human history, a period of peace and prosperity that has been dreamed of through all ages of man. And you're at the forefront. You are perfectly positioned to maximize your potential and get everything possible out of the unlimited opportunities now opening up around you. The key to great success has always been contained in the principle of leverage. It is your ability to leverage your talents and abilities as a multiplication sign through other people, enabling you to achieve extraordinary things in a short period of time. Men and women who achieve a lot have learned to leverage themselves in various ways and in various directions. And there is no place where leverage is more important than in your ability to influence others in such a way that they help you get the things you want, while at the same time helping themselves get the things they want. One of the great laws of life is the law of reciprocity. This law says that people always try to repay you for everything you do. In a positive sense, it means that every time you do something good for someone else, you create in them a sense of obligation. Since no one likes to be obligated to another person, they will do everything they can to get rid of that feeling of obligation by returning the favor, usually giving much more than what you initially contributed. For example, about five years ago, I bought a new car. At the end of the transaction, the sales manager instructed one of his employees to take me in the car to a nearby gas station and fill up the tank. In all my years of buying new and used cars, I had never had someone fill up the gas tank for me at the end of the transaction. Two years later, I went back to the same dealership and the same sales manager and bought another new car for my wife. I wanted to reciprocate with a $1.20 tank of gas. It led to a $45,000 purchase. And this is one of the great discoveries regarding the law of reciprocity, repayment. When you do something good for someone else, it can be disproportionate in relation to the size of the effort or expense you've made. One of the great principles of success practiced by all highly influential men and women is this. The more you give of yourself without expecting anything in return, the more you will receive from the most unexpected sources. Throughout all ages of man, this has been known as the law of sowing and reaping. 
the law of cause and effect, or even the law of action and reaction. It says that whatever you put in, you'll get out. It also says that you can plant a small seed and often reap an entire harvest. The wisest men and women in our society always look for opportunities to contribute to others, knowing that they are sowing seeds that will reap in the form of power, influence, and others' desire to cooperate and help them at a later time. On the other hand, people who seem to get nowhere in their lives and careers are always the ones trying to take something before putting it in. As the song goes, they put in a penny and want a dollar's worth of music. But this isn't for you. Your job is to maximize yourself and your potential throughout your life. And this requires intelligent and deliberate cultivation of people at all levels, doing things for them so that they are predisposed to reciprocate and do things for you when you need and want their help. Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, leadership is the ability to get people to do what you want them to do and to make them think it's their idea. But the big question we can ask ourselves right now is why don't people become rich in a country like ours with the opportunities we have? Why do so few people retire financially independent? And finally, I found the answers. These are what I consider to be the five reasons why people don't become rich. The first one at the top of the list is that it never occurs to them. The average person has grown up in a family where they have never known anyone rich. They go to school and socialize with people who are not rich. They work with people who are not rich. They have a reference group or a social circle outside of work that is not rich. They don't have role models who are rich. If this has happened to you throughout your formative years up to the age of 20, you can grow up and become a fully mature adult in our society. And it may never occur to you that it is as possible for you to become rich as for anyone else. This is why people who grow up in homes where their parents are rich are much more likely to become rich as adults than people who grew up in homes where their parents are not. So the first reason why people don't become rich is that it never occurs to them that it is possible for them. And of course, if it never occurs to them, they never take any of the necessary steps to make it happen, make a decision. The second reason why people don't become rich is that they never decide to do so. Even if a person reads a book, attends a conference, or associates with people who are financially successful, nothing changes until they make the decision to do something different. Even if a person realizes that they could become rich, if only they did certain things in a specific way, if they don't decide to take the first step, they end up staying where they are. If they continue to do what they've always done, they'll continue to get what they've always gotten. The main reason for underperformance and failure is that the vast majority of people don't decide to succeed. They never make a firm and unequivocal commitment or a definite decision that they are going to become rich. They want to and intend to and hope to and will someday. They wish, hope, and pray to make a lot of money, but they never decide, I'm going to do it. This decision is an essential first step towards becoming financially independent, maybe tomorrow. The third reason why people don't become rich is procrastination. People always have a good reason for not starting to do what they know they need to do to achieve financial independence. It's always the wrong month, the wrong season, or the wrong year. Business conditions in their industry aren't good or maybe too good. The market isn't right. They might have to take risks or give up their security. Maybe next year. There always seems to be a reason to postpone things. As a result, they keep postponing month after month, year after year, until it's too late. Even if a person has realized that they can become rich and has made the decision to change, Procrastination will push all their plans into an indefinite future. Pay the price. The fourth reason people retire poor is what economists call the inability to delay gratification. The vast majority of people have an irresistible temptation to spend every penny they earn and anything else they can borrow or buy on credit. If you can't delay gratification and discipline yourself to refrain from spending all you earn, you cannot become rich. If you can't practice budgeting as a lifelong habit, Achieving financial independence will be impossible. As W. Clement Stone said, if you cannot save money, the seeds of greatness are not in you. Take the long view. The fifth reason people retire poor is perhaps as important, if not more important than all the others, and it's lack of time perspective. In a longitudinal study conducted by Dr. Edward Bonfield at Harvard University in the 1950s and published in 1964 as The Unheavenly City, he studied the reasons for upward socioeconomic mobility. 
He wanted to know how one could predict whether an individual or a family would ascend in one or more socioeconomic groups and be wealthier in the next generations than in this generation. All his research led him to a single factor that he concluded was more accurate than any other in predicting success in the United States. They called it time perspective. This was defined as the amount of time taken into consideration when planning daily activities and making important decisions in life. Time perspective referred to how far into the future one projected when stating what they would or would not do in the present. An example of long-term perspective is the common practice among upper-class families in England of enrolling their children in Oxford or Cambridge as soon as they are born, even though they may not attend for 18 or 19 years. This is a long-term perspective in action. The young couple who start saving $1.50 a month in a college fund for their newborn child to attend the college or university of their choice is a couple with long-term perspective. They are willing to sacrifice in the short term to ensure better outcomes and results in the long term. People with a long-term perspective almost invariably ascend economically throughout their lives. And as we come to the end of our journey together, I want to leave you with one final thought. The journey of overcoming limits and cultivating powerful habits is not a destination. It's a lifelong pursuit. It's about continuously challenging yourself, pushing past your comfort zone, and embracing growth and evolution at every turn. It's about recognizing that the only limits that truly exist are the ones we impose upon ourselves, and that with dedication, discipline, and unwavering belief in our potential, we have the power to transcend those limits and achieve greatness beyond our wildest dreams. So, as you step out into the world, armed with the knowledge and insights gained from our time together, I urge you to embrace the journey ahead with courage, conviction, and an unshakable commitment to excellence. Remember that every action you take, every habit you cultivate, has the power to shape your destiny and propel you towards the life you've always imagined. But perhaps most importantly, Remember that you are not alone on this journey. Surround yourself with mentors, supporters, and fellow travelers who inspire and uplift you, and together you will soar to heights you never thought possible. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me. May you continue to push past your limits, defy expectations, and live a life filled with passion, purpose, and possibility. And may the powerful habits you've cultivated lead you beyond belief to a future filled with boundless opportunity and untold fulfillment.